Hello, I'm Elsa with LHP Engineering Solutions. Welcome to our first video on CAN Communication SAE. In this video, I will give you an overview of CAN. CAN stands for Controller Area Network. Before going to talk about CAN, I want to say what ECUs are. ECUs are electronic control units. Uh, for example, engine control unit, brake control unit, airbags, these are all electronic control units. In modern day cars, there are more than 70 ECUs. For proper functioning of the system, each ECU should communicate with every other ECU. Now you imagine how complex these connections will be with more than 70 ECUs and how heavy it will be on a vehicle. I want you guys to pause the video here and think of a solution for this. Yes, Canvas is a solution. Canvas is a common communication medium through which uh, messages are transmitted. Actually, this is node. Node is nothing but ECUs and each node has a transmitter and a receiver. For example, if ECU1 wants to transmit its message means it will transmit its message through the canvas and all the ECUs connected to this canvas will receive that message including the one which transmitted this message. Now I can hear you say wow who invented this right? Yep, it was invented by Robert Bosch in the year 1986. In 1993, ISO made it as a standard itself. Now I want to discuss the features of CAN under three topics. First one is physical layer. Canvas has two wires, CAN high and CAN low, twisted together to eliminate electromagnetic interference. And it has two terminating resistors. Uh, to prevent signal reflections. Otherwise, these signal reflections may cause uh, false signals. And these CAN nodes are nothing but ECUs. Actually, each message will be transmitted as bits only. Bits means zeros or ones. In this picture, there are two nodes and these two nodes are transmitting some message. Okay, if you see here, node A is transmitting zero and node B is also transmitting 0 and it is transmitting through the bus until it, both of these nodes are transmitting the same messages until it comes to this highlighted area. When it comes to this area, if you see node A is transmitting 0 and node B is transmitting 1, there the collision happens. If collision happens, uh, some node has to be given priority over the other one. So, 0 is a dominant bit. Whichever node transmits 0 gets a priority. So, if you see here, node A is transmitting 0 and node B is transmitting 1. So, node A gets priority and its message is transmitted through the bus. And at that point, node B stops transmitting and becomes a receiver. It listens to the message on the canvas. So, whatever the message is on the canvas, node B listens to that message now. Zero is the dominant bit and it always wins. And in the dominant stage, can high has a voltage of 3.5 volts and can low has a voltage of 1.5 volts which makes together 5 volts. And in the recessive state, both of them will have a voltage of 2.5 volts. Next is error detection. There are five mechanisms for error detection. First is bit monitoring. Actually, the CAN hardware will listen to the messages on the CAN bus for all the time. And next is bit stuffing. For example, let us assume some ECU has failed in the system and it will keep on sending the same bit. We don't know whether it is a... a it is a stuck up ECU which is sending same bits or it is the actual data to be transmitted. So to find out that if, uh, if same bits are transmitted for five times in a row, a opposite will be opposite bit will be added as a stuffed bit. So when ECUs receive the messages of a same bit for five times in a row, it expects to receive a opposite bit. But if it doesn't receive this opposite bit, 
then it is uh, confirmed that the ECU which transmitted this message has failed. Next is frame check. Every CAN message has a format that we, which we, uh, we will be discussing in the next slides. That frame, that format will be checked under frame check. Next is acknowledgement check. Um, a transmitter are transmitting the messages. Once the receiver receives those messages, it will send acknowledgement to the uh, transmitter saying, okay, I received your message. That is acknowledgement check. Next is cyclic redundancy check. Actually, for a simple explanation, I have uh, taken the example as temperature here. But actually, all the messages will be transmitted as bits only. For example, let us assume temperature is a data which needs to be transmitted. For every data, checksum value will be calculated and it will be added with the data itself. Okay. And now when the receiver receives the data in this example, it receives as temperature. Instead of temperature, some mistake has happened. So transmission error has happened. So when checksum value is calculated for this data, that value will be different from the value from this value. Okay. So it is uh, determined that some error has happened. So what will happen is, negative acknowledgement negative acknowledgement means a recessive acknowledgement one one bit one will be transmitted asking for retransmission of the data next is can frame or can message a yeah, can frame is a single packet on the canvas there are four types of can frames that is data frame remote frame error frame and overload frame data frame is a frame which we are going to be focused on and uh, uh, before going in detail with the data frame, I will give you a simple definition about all these frames and I will take it out of my way. Data frame. It is a standard CAN message which we saw. If one node transmits its message through the canvas, all the ECUs will receive that message. That is a data frame. Next is remote frame. Remote frame is a request from one node to the other node. For example, in this one, node A is asking node B what is the oil temperature because node B is connected to the oil temperature sensor here. So, it is a request from node A to node B. It is not the data. It is just the request from one node to other node. That is a remote frame. Okay, then node B is trend sending the data. The temperature is so and so. So, the, date, uh, the frame from node A to node B is what type of frame? Remote frame. And the data sent from node B to node A is? Yep, data frame. Next is error frame. If, uh, if receivers detect some error, then it will send the error frame. Next is overload frame. Uh, when receivers receive messages uh, and uh, before it could process those messages itself, if it is keep on getting more messages, then overload frame will be generated for, for the receivers to process the data. That is overload frame. Okay. Now let us see data frame in detail. There are eight key fields in each frame that is first one is data frame next is message identifier or otherwise it is called as can id and next is remote transmission request control data cyclic redundancy cycle acknowledge and enter frame there are two types of data frames standard data frame and extended data frame they both look the same except in the CAN ID field. The size of CAN ID is 11 bits here and in the extended data frame, the size of CAN ID is 29 bits. Startup frame, if, uh, uh, if the startup frame has a bit 0, then, uh, then the receivers know that it is going to receive a message. Then the CAN ID contains message priority and also functional addresses. 
and this data this is a field where actual data will be transmitted the maximum uh, size of data which can be transmitted is 64 bits only 64 bits means 8 bytes maximum 8 bytes of data only can be transmitted in a single packet uh, this control field contains the size of the data here for example let us assume uh, 12 bytes of data has to be transmitted but in single packet only 8 bytes of data can be transmitted so 8 bytes of data will be transmitted as one packet and the remaining 4 bytes will be transmitted as a next packet with all these informations like SOF, CANIT, RTR, everything will be attached with the data. So if you want to transmit 12 bytes of data, it can be transmitted as two packets of data. Yep, 8 bytes of data is a maximum length you can transmit in one packet. That's all in this video and if you like to learn more about CAN communications or our other available trainings such as automotive powertrain controls, embedded systems, functional safety and autonomous mobility, please visit us at LHPU.com. Thanks for listening.